אני מקשר עצמי לכל הצדיקים האמיתיים של הרנו, לכל הצדיקים האמיתיים של אוכלי עפר הקדוש שמשבר ארצנו, ובבחר רבנו הקדוש צדיק יסוד עולם נחה, נובע מכוח חוכמה רבנו נחמן ופגה, נא נח נחמן נחמן מאומן דוחי לילה בתורה. תתן לילה בהולי תורה, which we're going to receive on the 50th day, which is שבועות. And רבי נתן takes a beautiful approach in ליקוט ההלכות on the subject of ספירת העומר, according to lesson 6 of ליקוט המורן, discussing the subject of embarrassment. And this is such a chidush that Rabbeinu brings down in Torah Vav Alikut Emoran, discussing the subject of embarrassment and how embarrassment actually enabled you to attain the highest level of tshuva, what we call the keter of teshuva, the crown of tshuva. As we know, there's 10 sfirot, there's 10 emanations of Hashem, and Hashem kind of guides the world through these 10 sfirot. The foundation of Kabbalah is based on the 10 sfirot. Look at the Zohar, the writings of the Ari HaKadosh, Chassidut also, and the Keter is the highest Sfira of every single world, of every single level. The Keter is the highest level, it's the crown. And the crown, Rabbeinu says, the crown of all Teshuvah is when a person gets embarrassed and he stays silent. And Rabbi Nathan's going to go in depth as to what that means and practically how to apply that subject, especially during these seven weeks of Sfirat HaOmer, um, because these weeks are very, very special in the sense that we have a lot of work to do. It's not like Pesach, where the light of Hashem Yitbach is granted to us as a free gift. It's not the Oren Sof comes down on like the first night of the Seder and, in, and enhances us with this awesome light. It's not like God gives us this free gift of this free redemption. No, Hashem takes that away. And starting from the second day of the Omer, where we begin to give the Omer offering, we have to put in all this work. And level by level, step by step, we go from one sfirah to the next sfirah to build up this kli, to build up this vessel so that we can re receive the Torah with a proper, proper uh, bechina, with a proper level. And uh, it requires a lot of work to do that because we have to work step by step. And Rabbeinu teaches us this, this secret, that to really draw close to Hashem Barach, you have to serve Hashem Barach behad ragah with bemidah uh, by step and by measure. Level by level. You cannot force yourself to try to serve Hashem in Bar beyond your level. Rabbeinu says this is a very... A person can damage tremendously when he tries to serve Hashem beyond his level. And uh, what we... In, in, a, in the Kabbalistic terms, uh, what the Ari HaKadosh brings down in uh, Etz Chaim, um, that uh, this would be considered Shbirat uh, HaKenim, the breaking of the vessels. And uh, Rabbeinu brings this down in Torah Memtet of Likute Moran, Lesson 49, where he explains that a person needs to create a space, a, a, an empty space, a chalala panui within your heart. You need to create an empty space, a vacated space within your heart, so that from that place you can now create the world. Or you can create your midot, as Rabbeinu says. Because the olamot are the midot. And there's a very deep Kabbalistic relationship between the creation of the world and how that actually happens within each and every individual's heart to be able to actually perform small midot, to perform small good things without trying to attain everything at once to try to serve Hashem Barach level by level, step by step. And uh, this is told to us in literally the last words that Rabbi Nachman ever said um, on the earth as uh, Rabbeinu was being placed on his, uh, his bed a few hours before he passed away. The last words that he ever said were le'at, le'at, little by little. And this in itself is a very, very important idea um, to teach us that when we're going to serve Hashem it Barach, be happy with the small things, the little things. And that's Firat Omer. That's just a little bit about the subject of Firat Omer, considering that we're every single day counting a new day to take on the light of that day and uh, little by little to build up the vessel to be able to receive the Torah. Because if you really want to accept the Torah in its entirety, you have to be happy with the small things. You cannot only be happy when you're doing everything at once. You have to be besimcha with the little things. So Rabbeinu is going to continue. And uh, let's go to the introduction of what Rabbi Nathan brings in Nikut Halachot, Inyan Sfirat HaOmer, Halacha Aleph, the first Halacha on Sfirat HaOmer, which he discusses in relationship to Lesson 6 of Nikut Moran. And uh, let's introduce uh, this Nikut Halachot with what Rabbeinu says over there, because the only way to understand it is if we, we delve into the Nikut Moran first. So Rabbeinu explains, and Rabbi Nathan brings the introduction in Nikut Halachot. He brings all the, these bullet points. Tshuva Nikha Keter, Teshuva is called Keter. Ki haba li teher mesayino. Because when one wants to come to purify himself, as it's in the Gemara, it's in the Gemara Yomah, if I'm not mistaken, Omrim lo hamten. They tell him to wait. 
If you want to come purify yourself, if you want to draw close to God, what did Hashem in Barach tell you? Tells you, he tells you to wait. Shehu bechinat keter. And what is waiting? Waiting is keter. So, um, one wants to come purify himself. What is that? That's referencing chuba. You want to come return to God. And what does it say over there in the Gemara? They tell him to wait. So, what is it saying? That when one wants to do chuba, he needs to wait. And what is waiting? Waiting comes from the language of keter, literally. Because if you're going to go to Eov, it says over there, it says in Eov uh, chapter 36, Katar li ze'er. Wait for me a little bit, a little bit, and I will show you. And the was explaining that when one wants to do tshuva, Hashem Ibach tells him to wait. Wait a little bit and I will show you. Meaning Hashem says, I will come and direct you. I will come and assist you. But Keter comes from the word Katar in the language in Eov. Meaning what? Katar, wait for me. Katar li ze'er. Wait for me a little bit, and I will show you. And what does Rabbeinu explain? So we see that Keter represents comes from the language of Qatar and Eov, to wait. So Qatar represents waiting, and waiting is the essential aspect of Teshuvah, returning to Hashem. You cannot draw close to Hashem, you cannot do Teshuvah in one second. Rabbeinu is saying, le'at, le'at, little bit by little bit. Little by little bit. Hadraga umida. Step by step, measure by measure. Ve'ubchinat ehyeh ve'chule, ayen sham. And this is the name of Hashem, ekyeh, I will be. The same name that Hashem Ibach revealed to Moshe Rabbeinu at the burning bush when Hashem tasks Moshe Rabbeinu with redeeming the Jewish people from Egypt. He says over there, Eki Asher Eki. I will be that I will be. And that is the first time Hashem Ibach mentions this, mentions this name. This awesome name, this name which derives from the sphere of Keter. So the light of Keter is the name of Eki. And Rabbeinu says, it's impossible to merit this light, to merit this tshuva, which Rabbeinu explains enables you to attain kavod elokim, the, the honor of Hashem, because there's two types of kavod. There is kingly honor, the honor which a person tries to chase in this world, which is not l'shem shamayim, not for the sake of heaven, an honor which is for you. And then there's king, there's a godly honor, kavod elokim. And kavod elokim, this godly honor, is associated with Hashem in Barach. And that is specifically when you run away from honor in this world. When you run away from, from leadership, from honor, from things that, that are for yourself. When you decide to run away from things that will give you honor and try to maximize the honor of Hashem in Barach, then you attain Kevod Elohim, the honor of Hashem. And as it says over there, Rabbeinu explains in section 1, lesson 6, Kevod Elohim, Hashter Devar. And he explains this from, uh, from Mishle. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that the Kvod Elohim, the honor of Hashem, is a hidden matter. So, we see from here, this idea that if one wants to take Kvod Elohim, you have to do Tshuva. And Tshuva is all the ideas we just mentioned. The idea of waiting, waiting being Keter, and Keter representing the name of Ekye. So, Rabbeinu explains that Tshuva is associated with the name of Ekye. I will be. Why is that the case? Because he explains over there. Rabbeinu explains in Lesson 6, that... When a person does not do tshuva, it's as if he has not even existed in the world yet. It's as if he has no havaya, he has no existence. And ekye comes from what the language of the Zohar, da ana zamin lemeheve, I am prepared to exist. Meaning what? Now that I'm going to do tshuva, I'm prepared to have existence, I'm prepared, prepared to have a place in the world. As it said in the Gemara Eruvin, that tov lo shelo nivra meshi nivra, better that a person be not created, have not been created, has he not, had, had he not done tshuva? Meaning what? If you do not do tshuva, it's as if you have no existence. It's as if you have, it's better you have not been created. Meaning, you have no place in the world. The second you do tshuva, the second you say, Hashem Ibach, I'm ready to draw close to you. That's the second you begin to have Havaya existence. And that's the name Ekye. Because you're, what is Ekye? As it says in the door, Ana zamin I'm prepared to exist. Meaning what? Teshuva. I'm prepared to live. Prepared to be. And that's what Rabbeinu is explaining the entire subject of this lesson of Sfirat HaOmer. That the only way to truly attain this tshuva is what? When you are silent for Hashem in Barach. Silent for the sake of Hashem. Da'inu, and when is that applicable? When, it, when is that the case? Kshayishma bizyono yidom veyishtok veyispol hacharafot vizono. Meaning when you hear yourself being shamed, being vilified, being disgraced, you don't wish talk, you stay silent and quiet. Just like Aaron HaKohen, when he heard about the, uh, the, the death of his sons, 
לאדם הנביא הוא וידום אהרון, אהרון סטי צרנט. זה סיי מידה. ידום וישתוק. אתה סטי צרנט ואין קוויית. בואו תלמוד אינסייד, מיני אינסייד, אתה לא יכול להגיד את האדם שאתה מתבאסים אותך נגדיבלי. ואתה לא יכול להגיד את האדם שאתה לא יכול להגיד את האדם שאתה לא יכול להגיד. ויזבול על חרפות וביזונות. ואתה יכול להגיד את האדם שאתה לא 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 יכול להגיד את האדם שאתה לא
So you're going to have 7 plus Aleph Hei Yud. Aleph Hei Yud is 16. That's 23. And then plus Aleph Hei and Yud and Hei, which is 21, as we said, because that's the numerical value of Eke. 23 plus 21 equals 44. Meaning, meaning what? Eke is Be'achoraim. It's facing. It, the back is facing you. Meaning Hashem himself, the, the, the vision of Hashem, which we can describe as Eke, the name of Hashem Itbarach, this Midah of Hashem Itbarach, which is associated with Eke, the Midah of Keter, is not facing you. Why? And why is that the case? Because you still have yet to do Tshuva. And because you have yet to do, yet to do Tshuva, you haven't attained the light of Eke yet. You haven't attained the light of Tshuva, the light of Keter yet. You have not begun to do tshuva. You have not waited yet. You have not experienced embarrassment yet. And because that's the case, because you have this blood of the left ventricle of the heart still in its power, what Rabban was saying is, a kid is facing, its, its back is facing you. It's not face to face with you. You're not face to face with Hashem. And what's the backside of Ekeh? Achoraim, literally the Achoraim of Ekeh. It's a numerical value of 44. To show what? That the dam, the blood, is still in its strength in your heart. You need to get rid of that bad blood. And therefore, this is why you get embarrassed, which is what? It's as if your blood, blood is being spilled. And we learned it from Tamar and Yehuda, that Tamar was willing to sacrifice herself, to literally die on Kiddush Hashem. Why? To endure embarrassment, to, to not embarrass Yehuda in public. She said, I will give my signs to Yehuda. She sent the signet ring and all the things that Yehuda had given her. Um, when they were together, the entire story. And uh, she said, if Yehuda wants to confess in public, then so be it. But I will not do it. And I will not embarrass him in public. I'm willing to jump into a burning furnace. That the as Rashi explains over there, that uh, she was willing to, to literally be killed, that to embarrass someone publicly. Because why? Embarrassing someone publicly, embarrassing someone is likened to murder. To Shvich Damim, spilling blood. That's what Rabbi was saying. Therefore, what's happening to you? You're getting embarrassed because you need to spill that blood. Literally spill the blood. Which blood? The blood of your Tavot. The blood of your desires. The blood of the left ventricle of the heart. The blood of the Yetzirah. The evil incarnation. And Rabbi explains that through the silence and being quiet when you're embarrassed, what do you transform the dam to? Transform the dam the blood into dumb, into silence. That's the tikkun. Rabbanu says the tikkun for the bad blood in your heart is to be embarrassed and to stay silent. It's the same words. Dam and dom. The same letters. Same root. And Rabbanu explains you have to do teshuva on your tshuva. Because even if you say I've done tshuva, even if you say that I did, I repented, I, I returned to Hashem in Barach, how can you say that your sorry was was clear. Your sorry was perfect. Rid of ulterior motives. Because even if I'm going to come say sorry to Hashem, if I grow to the next level by next week or in two weeks or in a month or by tomorrow, the sorry I said yesterday was nowhere near the sincerity of the sorry I can say today. Because I'm at this level and yesterday I was here. So Rabban was explaining that to do a true tshuva, you have to do a teshuva on your tshuva. Because nobody can say that when they were saying sorry, their heart was pure of ulterior motives. So you're going to have to say sorry over the fact that your sorry wasn't real. That's a tshuva tshuva. And then when Rabenu says, Rabenu explains that when you stay silent, when you're embarrassed and you do tshuva tshuva, this entire subject that we're talking about, you turn the dam into dom and then the dom becomes what? If you add a, when you add a letter aleph, which is, uh, what do you call it? The lower yud, the vav and the upper yud. When a person stays silent, when he's embarrassed, um, Rabbeinu explained that the, the demima, the silence, represents the lower yud. The vav is when your face changes colors because of the fact that you're literally embarrassed. Your face goes white, goes red, changes many colors. That's the vav. And then the upper yud is the keter. That is the tshuva that you merit, the kvodar okim that you merit whenever um, you stay silent. So Rabbeinu explained just by the act of staying, style, staying silent, when you're embarrassed, you're able to add the letter aleph to dom. And then what, is, what does it become? Adam. You literally become a man to sit on a chair. Explains this in the prophecy in Yechezkel, with Ma'asim Nechkava over there, the work of the chariot, the, some of the deepest secrets uh, in the world. Um, over there, that there was a man sitting on a chair, referencing to Hashem et Barach. But um, Rabbeinu explains, when he was giving this Torah, Rabbeinu actually was sitting on his, uh, on his chair, his famous chair. And he shook the end of the chair when he was explaining this concept. And he said, one who sits on the chair is a man. 
And uh, Rabbi Nathan said, I didn't even, I, can, I don't even understand what that means. Rabbi Nathan, he admitted, he said, I don't even understand the Kavanah of Rabbeinu. But Rabbeinu says that a person who is able to sit on the chair is able to be like Hashem Bach in the fact that he's able to judge the world. It's an incredible inyan. That's the introduction, lesson six. I know it took some time, but now we're going to understand to try to get into the inyan of Omer with all that introduction. So Rabbi Nathan explains, and I'm going to read a piece from Otsar Ayira, from, um, from uh, Rabbi Nachman Micherin's uh, compilation of all these pieces of Likut Arachot, Likut Emoran. I'm going to read a piece from Otsar Ayira and connect it to Likut Arachot also, Bezrat Hashem. אחר יום ראשון של פסח מסתלקת תכף ההערה הגדולה שאירה עלינו רק בחסדו הגדול כאן. אז הוא אקספליין דבר On the first day of Pesach we received a huge illumination from the אור אינסוף, from the light of the infinite one himself, from God himself. And that was only because Hashem wants to do it because of his chesed, his kindness, his abundant and endless kindness. But not because we deserve anything. ואז צריכים לחזור אלו תאר עצמנו בהדרגה מבחינת הדמים הרעים שהם מבחינת זוהמת מצרים, אני אחז בנו. And what does Rabbi Nathan explain? He says, but starting on the second day of Pesach, which is when we begin to count the Omer, that light is taken away. And we have to gain back that light, but this time differently. Not out of Hashem's chesed, not out of God's kindness, but we're going to work for it. And this time, we need to return and to purify ourselves step by step, from all the evil blood that is still holding on us. What's that evil blood? The blood of the left ventricle of the heart? The blood which we're going to explain right now, that the Zohar Kadosh likens the blood of the, the, the menstrual blood of the woman and the, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, what do you call it? The blood of the Ta'avot and of course the, the Svirat Omer. He explains all this, that Svirat Omer is meant to purify us from Dam Nidut, the blood of the, menstrual woman, uh, of the menstruating woman. So all these concepts and all these subjects, because it all derives from the same source, all this blood, this impure blood. Rabbi is explaining how to get rid of that through this tikkun of staying silent. And how Sfirat Omer, this entire process, this entire period, is all about staying silent. And Rabbi Natan is going to explain the practicality of this, how we literally go through this, how we can accomplish this every single day. Especially when we go to eat Bodhidu, to begin to speak to Hashem, we begin to do tshuva at a sincere level. So, Rabbi Nathan says, we have to return and purify ourselves once again, but this time, measure by measure, step by step, from all the evil blood that is still holding on to us. And what's that blood represent? The filthiness of Egypt that is still latching on to us. Because what? We were in 49 gates of impurity in Egypt. And on the Torah, when we get to Torah, we, were, we received, we, we went to the 50th gate, we were on the 49th gate of Tushat, that's what we, we uh, before we received the Torah. That's why we count 49 days from the second day of Pesach until Shavuot. Why? Because on the 50th day, which is Shavuot itself, that's the Sharnun, that's the 50th gate. That's the, that's the Bechina Bina, that's where, uh, what do you call it? That's when Hashem brings down the Torah and everything. So Rabbeinu explained, to get rid of the 49 gates of impurity, the, the, the evil blood which has been latching onto us from Egypt, we have to count 49 days. So Rabbeinu explains, and Rabbi Nathan so Rabbi Nathan teaches us and the main way to purify yourself from this evil blood the evil blood of Egypt to literally get rid of the impurity of Egypt is whenever you endure embarrassment and shame and your blood is spilled in public or you're you're literally embarrassed it doesn't even need to be in public you're literally embarrassed and you stay you stay quiet and why do you stay quiet in order to be able to merit to do to do a true tshuva to return to hashem truthfully and sincerely and to draw close to dusha be'emet truthfully and when you do this you're able to transform the dam the blood into dom into silence by fulfilling in the verse, Dom la Hashem Dom la Hashem, stay silent and long for Him. Dom la Hashem, stay silent for Hashem. When you stay silent for Hashem, this is the tikkun for all the bad blood in your heart. It's an amazing chidush. It's really such an amazing chidush. Rabbi was explaining at a deep level. He's saying, if you really want to get rid of your tavot, you really want to attain true kedusha true holiness, you need to stay silent. Even when Hashem embarrasses you sometimes through rejection, when a person comes and embarrasses you, whatever the situation might be, staying silent. 
Silence is the tikkun for all the bad blood in our heart, for all the filth of Egypt, and to truly attain the Ketusha of Tshuva, to truly merit to do, to do a true Tshuva, to return to Hashem truthfully. And by doing so, as we explained above, you transform the hidden face of, of Ekeh, because Ekeh was hidden from you. Hashem hid his face from you. And which was the numerical value of Dam, because the Achoraim, the backside of Ekeh, Aleph plus Aleph Hey plus Aleph Hey and Yud plus Aleph Hey and Yud and Hey, Gematria 44, Gematria Dam, blood. Why? Because the reason why Hashem's face is face is hidden from you, is because you still have blood in the left ventricle of your heart. You still have tavot, you still haven't done tshuva. But whenever you stay silent, you, then you transform that hidden face of Hashem and you make Him face you. You attain the light of Ekeh. And what do you now merit to do? You are prepared to exist. You're prepared to live. This is what we call teshuva. And through this you create the concept of man. Not only you... Allow Hashem to exact his to execute his judgment. But you yourself were able to sit on the throne. Abenu has another Torah in Ikutim where he discusses that um, the man on who is able to sit on the throne is able to execute Rosh Hashanah. He's able to do Rosh Hashanah. Meaning he's able to judge people. A person who's at this Madriga can literally sentence for life or for death. There are, there are tzaddikim are able to sit on the throne. And all of this we merit during the days of Sfirat HaOmer. That we, during Sfirat HaOmer, what is the entire goal? To prepare ourselves for, to receive the Torah and Shavuot. And this is the main way that the world was created, the world was sustained, and this is why we are sustained. Why? Because of the Torah HaKtosha. That's the only reason why we exist. And what does it mean? I'm prepared to exist. The Torah is the reason why we exist. And of course, this idea of Eke, staying silent, is also now preparing you to exist. Meaning, this is the main way to receive the Torah. The, the, the Torah in itself sustains the entire world. It's the reason the world exists. But the only way you can exist is if you do Tshuva. And that's why Tshuva is Mesuga um, during Sfirat HaOmer. This is why Teshuva is so chashuv. It's so important to, to try to do Tshuva during Sfirat HaOmer. Every single day to do Tshuva and Tshuva. To do the Tshuva today that you did differently than yesterday. To say sorry over the fact that your sorry yesterday wasn't sincere. And to do this day after day after day until you merit on, Sfirat, on, on Shavuot itself to receive the Torah, the Sharnun. Uh, to get to the 50th gate. Ba'alken, and therefore, and this is why during Sfirat HaOmer, we bring the barley offering, we weigh this barley offering, these, these stalks of barley. To teach us that what during Sfirat HaOmer, well, we're still waving these barley offerings. What are we doing? It's coming to teach us, being that barley is an animal food, it's not a human food. Um, as it's brought down in the Gemara, that. Barley, we wave around this barley to teach us that we have not yet merited the concept of Adam, man, yet. We haven't added the Aleph yet, the Aleph of being silent when we're embarrassed. We haven't yet truly done this Tshuva yet. Only on Shavuot we become a man. When we merit to do this Tshuva for 49 days. But Rabbeinu is explaining, we haven't yet merited this uh, Omer, we haven't yet merited this, uh, this Tshuva. And therefore, we have not yet become Adam. And this is why we wave this barley offering, because we which is the human food, is only brought on, on Shavuot. I mean, Nathan's going to explain that later in Likut Al-Akhot, why on Shavuot, a, 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 a wheat offering, a, a, an offering of two breads are brought, and why it has to be wheat, and why during the Sfiat Omer it's barley, the entire subject is barley. Being that barley is animal food, and wheat is human food, we have not yet merited to get to the wheat. Like, we are still in the aspect of the animal. Why? Because what separates an animal from a human? Speech. The animal has no speech. And because during this these seven weeks we have to be silent in the sense that we have to accept our chuba, we have to do our chuba and recognize our flaws, recognize our faults, and draw close to Hashem sincerely to truly do teshuva. We have to stay silent. Make no excuses. To come to Hashem truthfully and to say, Hashem, you are right and I am wrong. So what does Rabbi Nathan say? He continues. And we wave this barley offering as a koban, as a sacrifice, as a, ple as a pleasant fragrance for Hashem. 
כי אנו מכינים עצמנו לקבלת התורה because we are preparing ourselves for the receiving of the Torah. לעלות על ידי זה מבחינת בהמה לבחינת אדם. Meaning what? We're preparing ourselves to ascend from the category of the animal to the human kingdom. And that is the entire subject of Sirat HaOmer. So he continues. ומחמת שעיקר התשובה הוא בושה, because the main essence of תשובה is embarrassment. כי צריכים לסבול בדיונות הרבה בשביל שיזכה להתקרב אל הצדיקה, האמת שאני לא אזכה לתשובה שלמה. Because a person, and now Rabbi Nathan goes to the, the פנימיות הכוונה. He gets into the real aspect of the covenant of tshuva. Because a person needs to endure tremendous shame and embarrassment in order to draw close to the true tzaddik. So that when he draws close to the true tzaddik, then he merits a true tshuva. Rabbi Nathan explained, you cannot do a true tshuva unless you draw close to, a true, to the true tzaddik. To the true tzaddik. To the tzaddik is the Lord. To the tzaddik at the Bechina Moshe Rabbeinu. You cannot merit a true tshuva unless you draw close to the true tzaddik. שעלידו יזכה לי תשובה שלמה, that through him you merit a true תשובה, a complete תשובה. ואפילו אין לו בזיונות מאחרים. And even if you have no embarrassment from people literally, meaning that it's not like someone is physically coming out and embarrassing you. צריך להתבייש בעצמו מאוד על כל מעשה ושיהיה לו שפיכות דמים ממש הרבה מזה. You yourself need to be embarrassed by your own תאוות. You, you need to be embarrassed by yourself. You need to feel red. You need to spill your own blood. You need to go to do it, Bodedut, and to tell Hashem, Itbarach, Hashem, where am I in the world? Hechan ani ba'olam. Where am I in the world? You need to come to Hashem, Itbarach, and to explain why you are very far from Him. And to, to express to Him sincerely where you are in the world. To tell Hashem, Itbarach, where am I? What am I doing here? And to go through the things that you are not holding on, that you're not holding up to. To tell Hashem, Itbarach, that you're not holding in this, to rebuke yourself in a sense. That you need to judge yourself. Well, Rabbeinu says mishpat. You need to judge yourself. Over the things that you're not doing. And hold yourself accountable. And to really, ar- uh, to, to arouse an embarrassment from within yourself. And when you do that, you spill your own blood. You're accomplishing the same thing. And this is the essence of a man's tshuva, Rabbi Nathan teaches us. It's in the Gemara Barachot, Daf Yud Bet, Amud Bet, as it says over here. One who transgresses in Avera, one who commits a sin. Umid Bayeshba, but he's embarrassed by the fact that he committed the sin. Mochalin lo, they forgive him. So what? The ikar of the tshuva has to be that you arouse your own embarrassment. Either the embarrassment is going to come from someone else. It's going to come from Hashem's rejection. It's going to come from within yourself. That you yourself recognize that you are not holding That you are far from Hashem. And when you are conscious of that, then you begin to start doing tshuva. And this is the Omer Seorim. This is the barley offering. That we are, embar- that we're almost embarrassing ourselves. We are admitting. We are confessing over the fact that we are still literally like animals. We are still full of ta'avot. We still act like animals. We follow our animalistic desires. And just like an animal has no strength to speak, it has no power of speech, so to us, we cannot respond. We have no excuse to Hashem. All we can do is to listen to Hashem. And to stay silent in the aspect of Dom La Hashem. Stay silent for Hashem to fulfill the Pasuk and Tehillim. And that embarrassment, Rabbi Nuh says, that is your strength. That is the ikar of your tikkun. That is your main rectification. Rabbi Nathan says, that is the ikar of your tshuva. And then what is Rabbi Nathan say? Says, what did Rabbi Nathan say? That he says that even one who damages, who, who does many bad things, God forbid, but he admits that he, he knows where the truth is and that he's not there, and he's embarrassed over this, and he accepts upon himself this shame, and he spills his own blood in the fact that he's so embarrassed, he's so ashamed, in order to accept this tshuva, to merit this tshuva, then truthfully, he's rectified through this, Rabbi Nathan says. That's the tikkun. To long to get out of the place of the darkness in which you're in. The story of the lost princess. The one advice, the one thing 
that um, that uh, the princess tells the viceroy of the king. When the viceroy of the king finds the princess for the first time in the, the palace of the no good one, the palace of the Yitzhak. And the prince and the viceroy asked the princess, How do I get you out? The princess being the soul, your own soul, that's the princess, the Bat Malka, um, the Bat Melech, the, the princess. She's the she's the soul. Abenu explains, I mean nothing explains the Hakdama of uh, of Sibor Masyot, that it represents the soul of every individual when it comes down to this world, the, the world of Galut, this world of tests and ta'avot and desires and all these lusts, God forbid. And when you come down and you're questioned by all these things, all you can do is what the, uh, the viceroy asks the princess, what can I do to get you out? And she responds, just long for me. Long to get out. To recognize that you're not that you're, you haven't found the princess yet, and to long to find her. You know, I mean, Nathan's saying the same thing here. When you are in your galut, when you're in your tavot, when you're in your desires, and you can't even help yourself because you're so entrenched in your evil, at least recognize you're there. And the one thing you can do is recognize and come to Hashem and be embarrassed over the fact that you're there and long to get out. And by longing to get out, by being embarrassed over the fact that you shouldn't be here, that is the entire tikkun. That is the entire rectification of all your fall. That is how you turn the fall into the ascent. That is how you merit from all the, the 49 gates of impurity to get to the 49 gates of Tushan and to merit the 50th gate, the, the gate of the Torah Tosha. It's an incredible, incredible piece of advice, Rabbi Nathan says, that's so applicable because we all have so much gava, we all have so much arrogance that we need to get rid of within ourselves in order to merit the kvod the, the the honor of Hashem Itbar, this godly honor that is literally waiting for us, waiting for us to accept it. It's just, unfortunately, we get lost along the way searching for other honors, searching for temporary things that will not bring us any joy, any purpose. And Rabbi Nathan saying, Rabbi Nathan explaining that the only way to do that is by staying silent. That even means at a physical level when someone embarrasses you, that means at a spiritual level accepting the fact that you're not where you should be. And coming to Hashem Yitbach and literally feeling embarrassed. Um, Rabbi Nachum of Chernobyl, Rabbi Nachum of Chernobyl, um, who's a very big Hasid, a, a very big Tzadik, he when he came before Rabenu, when he saw Rabenu as a child, literally just a few years old, um, he testified about Rabenu that Rabenu literally had the fear of Hashem upon his face. <clears throat> that he literally had the fear of Hashem on his face so that Rabenu would not sin. And um, Na Rabbi Nachum of Chernobyl said that about Rabenu. Rabenu is known as a child. Rabenu used to walk around with a red face all the time. And his mom used to ask him, Fega used to ask him, why, why is your face red? And Rabenu brings this, I think it's brought down in Shifrei Aran, Rabbi Nathan brings this down, that uh, Rabenu used to respond by saying, because he felt so embarrassed and ashamed before Hashem is Barach. That's what Rabbi Nathan is teaching us. That we should be, we should emulate this characteristic, we should emulate this. We should follow Rabenu's footsteps in the sense that what? To literally Feel the embarrassment on your face that it's literally showing on your face that you're red because you're so ashamed of the fact of where you should be and where you're really holding. And uh, Rabbi Nathan finishes off in this piece. Mikoshiken, um, Mishutaobemet, all the more so one who is truthfully pure. And nonetheless, he's still embarrassed within himself. Because his purity is not to the highest extent. Meaning, the man can actually be a tzaddik. But he's still ashamed over the fact that he could be better. He's still not perfect enough in his own eyes. Or over the, f or over the fact that his perceptions are limited. Even though he could be a huge tzaddik, but his perceptions might be limited. Then he uh, merits... Uh, he merits through this a tshuva. Rabbi Nathan says, even for this tzaddik, al tshuva, al tshuva, then he merits a teshuva and tshuva, meaning by the fact that he's embarrassed over the fact that he's not high enough. He's still high, but he's still doing tshuva over the fact that he's not high enough. 
And that in itself is teshuvah, teshuvah. That is a teshuvah on your previous teshuvah. And he merits through this a true a teshuvah, teshuvah, and he merits to go from one level to the next. Just to finish off this idea of what we were talking about earlier about the wheat and the barley. That's why uh, on uh, Shabbat we give chita. Chita meaning wheat. Because chita has the numerical value of 22. You have the chet of chita, which is 8. The tet, which is 9. That's 17. And the he, which is 5. That is 22. Um, the numerical value of 22 also represents the 22 letters of the Aleph Bet. Meaning when a person um, does tshuva, and he does a tshuva al tshuva, he stays silent when he's embarrassed, and he goes through this entire process. During Sfirat HaOmer, he merits the bread. He merits to give two offerings of bread on Shavuot, um, which is the offering of wheat, being that now he merits to move from the category of animal to human. Meaning now he can merit the 22 letters of the Aleph Bet, he can actually speak again. He merits his speech properly. That's only possible when we first stay silent. So Rabbi Nathan saying, before you really want to speak, before you want to merit true speech, true holiness, you first have to stay silent and recognize your impurity, to recognize your insufficiency. And when you do that, when you judge yourself in a way of doing tshuva, not God forbid to get depressed, because a person can fall into the, the when a person does this too much, he can really get depressed. Rabbi Nathan said, we still have to be besimcha. But when we're going to do that process of tshuva, to have a lemnish to have a broken heart over the fact of, that we're not in the place that we should be, this allows us to really attain a true tshuva, the highest tshuva, the tshuva shavuot, the tshuva tzviyat ha'omer, which uh, Rabbi Natan is talking about. So Rizat Hashem should all have the merit to uh, do this process, to fulfill this process during tzviyat ha'omer, to fulfill what Rabbeinu says in Lesson 6, and uh, to, uh, to do this, also while being the Simcha as well, the Ezrat Hashem.